President Al-Assad issues decree number 25 relating to the annual fiscal budget of 2014 with an amount of 1,390 billion Syrian pounds. Foreign Ministry stresses that the U.S. intention to hold talks with the Islamic Front reveals its failure to form an opposition delegation to Geneva Conference. Units of the Syrian Arab Army continue firm advance in Adra city. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our news for today. President Bashar al-Assad has issued Law No. 25 specifying the appropriations of the state's general budget for fiscal year 2014, amounting to 1,390 billion Syrian pounds. The Foreign and Expatriates Ministry spokesman has expressed the Ministry's astonishment at the statements made by the American Secretary of State and the American State Department's spokeswoman recently about the U.S. intention to hold talks with the Islamic Front Organization to discuss the American alleged non-lethal assistance and encourage it to participate in the Geneva Conference to ensure a wide representation of what the spokeswoman called the Syrian opposition. The Foreign Minister Ministry spokesman affirmed that this stand confirms the U.S. failure to form a delegation that represents all the opposition factions to attend the Geneva Conference. It also contradicts the U.S. responsibility to implement U.N. Security Council's resolutions on combating terrorism and contravenes international undertakings not to give the terrorist organizations the chance to participate in the conference's meetings. The spokesman added that the Islamic Front, which comprises a number of armed terrorist organizations, share with Javed al-Nusra the same thought, strategy and objectives. One of the Islamic Front leaders, Zahran Alouj, the foreign ministry spokesman said, has defended the relationship with Javed al-Nusra, internationally categorized as terrorist and linked to Al-Qaeda organization. The foreign ministry spokesman referred to the involvement of the Islam Army, the largest battalion of the Islam Front, in executing Adra massacre on January 11, 2013, which claimed the lives of 100 citizens. The foreign ministry spokesman said the USA should have read the Islamic Front's charter before deciding to confer with it affirmed that the Syrian Arab Republic that has expressed readiness to take part in the Geneva Conference finds no legal or ethical justification for the participation of such terrorist organizations in the conference which should place the question of combating terrorism on the top of its agenda instead of allowing those terrorists who seek to implement their extremist takfiri agendas to attend the conference. The Foreign Ministry called for the immediate stop of all support offered to the terrorist organizations. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov has expressed his country's satisfaction over the positive progress between Syria and Iran. Addressing the Russian Federal Council, Lavrov said the elimination of the Syrian chemical weapons was going on as scheduled. He stressed that the second phase of the plan required the unified work of a number of states calling on all sides to combine efforts to combat terrorism and extremism. The Russian Foreign Minister said settling the Iranian nuclear file should lead to reconsidering the missile shield deployment plans in Europe. Russia has sent 40 tons of humanitarian aid to Syrian displaced families in Lebanon who were forced by terrorist groups to flee their cities and towns. The Russian Ministry of Emergency Affairs dispatched plane to Beirut International Airport loaded with different types of foodstuff, blankets, sugar and tents. The Russian Ministry has already sent two planes to Latakia Airport carrying 44 tons of humanitarian aid to displaced families stressing that only a political solution in Syria can alleviate the suffering of those affected families.
During a telephone call with Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Jawad Zarif, UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon has underlined the need of Iran's participation in the Geneva II International Conference on the Syrian Crisis to be held next month. Zarif said the UN Secretary General had affirmed to him that Iran's presence in Geneva II was necessary for Syria's future. Welcome back. The Syrian Arab army continues to advance successfully in Adra workers' town in Damascus suburbs, tightening control on several residential buildings after eliminating a large number of terrorists. The news correspondent camera has accompanied the Syrian Arab army troops who advanced very carefully to preserve the lives of hundreds of civilians who are held by the armed groups in order to be used as human shields. The Syrian Arab army units also cut off the road of supplies for the terrorists who are inside the city and who have been completely cordoned until the area is fully cleared by the Syrian Arab army. A terrorist attack which took place on Al Kiswe Al Harjilli Road in Damascus countryside wounded six civilians, including a child and three women. A source at the police command of the province told Sana reporter that terrorists remotely detonated an explosive device they had earlier planted in a garbage container in front of a car maintenance workshop on Al Kiswe Road. In Dara, units of the Syrian Arab army targeted terrorist gangs in Al Kirik and Al Khalil Mosque in Dara al Balad, killing and wounding scores of gunmen. In Homs, Syrian Arab army targeted several terrorist hideouts in the neighborhoods of Al Hamidiye and Al Wa'ar and near the vegetable selling outlet in Al Rastan, killing many terrorists and injuring others. Syrian Arab army units also destroyed the terrorist hideouts, eliminating all terrorists and their weapons and ammunition inside in the village of Al Lubidiya in the eastern countryside of Homs. In Idlib countryside, Syrian Arab army killed a number of terrorists in the villages and towns of Kafar Najd, Harish Msaibin, Sarjrit of Tanaz and Binnish, as well as in the vicinity of the town of Benin. Syrian TV correspondent said that Syrian Arab army destroyed vehicles equipped with machine guns in Taftanaz and Binnish and east of Sergei as well as south of Termila, killing the terrorists who were inside, including the Saudi terrorist Farhan Uthman, the Kuwaiti Mohammed Laubaidi, and the Moroccan Musa Naddaf Tobish and several others. Finally, in Aleppo, Syrian Arab army units targeted several terrorist gatherings, killing many terrorists and injuring others in Aleppo Citadel, Tal al Ghali, and to the north of Al Nayrab Airport, as well as in Bustan al Basha, Al Mansoura, the old city of Aleppo, Salah al Din, Al Sukkari, and Al Ansari. Syrian Arab army also destroyed many vehicles, killing all terrorists inside at Al Jundul roundabout and in the vicinity of Minag Airport, as well as in their Hafer, Kafar Al Naqarin and in several other areas of Aleppo countryside. With this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, syriaonline.sy. Now to latest business and market news with Vani Genjian, but after a short break.